Man, I tell you, there's something powerful about speaking in tongues. And when it comes to hearing the voice of God, when you speak in tongues, you are speaking forth from the Spirit, the part of you that has the mind of Christ, that's renewed in knowledge, that knows all things. You are praying the perfect wisdom of God in a mystery. And all you got to do is say, God, what am I saying? And God will give you an interpretation. Speaking in tongues, also known as glossolalia, is a practice mentioned in the New Testament that has been subject to various interpretations and practices within different Christian tradition. Here's a detailed examination of the concept. Biblical context of speaking in tongues 1, Acts 2, 1, 13. The most prominent instance of speaking in tongues occurs on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit descends on the apostles, enabling them to speak in various human languages unknown to them, but understood by people from different nations present in Jerusalem. This event demonstrated the power of the Holy Spirit and served as a sign to unbelievers. 2. 1 Corinthians 12, 14. The Apostle Paul addresses the issue of spiritual gifts, including speaking in tongues, in his letters to the Corinthians. He emphasizes that speaking in tongues is a gift of the Holy Spirit meant to edify the church when accompanied by interpretation. Paul encourages the use of gifts in an orderly manner and prioritizes prophecy over tongues for communal edification. 3. Mark 16, 17. Jesus mentions that one of the signs accompanying believers would be speaking in new tongue. This is part of the Great Commission, highlighting the spread of the gospel. I, I want to know, what do you guys think tongue in the gospel is? Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost. There were a lot of people who spoke different languages. And all of a sudden, the Apostle Peter stood up and communicated the gospel. And the Holy Spirit gave the apostles the gift of tongues, meaning by that they were able to speak in languages that they had never spoken before in, they had never learned. And the Holy Spirit gave them the ability to speak those languages to communicate the gospel. Amen. The second use of tongues is in 1 Corinthians. Speaking in tongues is in a language that nobody knows. It's a unknown language, but there must be an interpreter there. So the Holy Spirit comes upon a person. They speak in an unknown language that nobody knows, a message from the Holy Spirit. And then there has to be, Paul writes, an interpreter. So it just can't just be gibberish. But it, it sounds like gibberish at first. But then an interpreter steps in and interprets. And who is the interpreter and how can they understand the gibberish that is being said? Right. It's the Holy Spirit who enables both the speaker of the tongue and the interpreter to communicate the message. And if there's a breakdown there, Paul says, well, watch out, that's not from the Holy Spirit. In the New Testament, speaking in tongues primarily refers to the miraculous ability to speak in actual human languages unknown to the speaker, but understood by listeners, Acts 2. The primary purpose was to serve as a sign for unbelievers and to facilitate the spread of the gospel across language barriers. 1 Corinthians 14, 22. Paul instructs that, in a church setting, tongues should be accompanied by interpretation to benefit the entire congregation, 1 Corinthians 14, 27, 28. <laughs> In many charismatic and Pentecostal movements, speaking in tongues often involves glossolalia, where the utterances are not identifiable human languages, but are considered a spiritual or heavenly language. Many charismatics view speaking in tongues as a personal prayer language that enhances their spiritual connection with God, 1 Corinthians 14, 4. While personal edification is emphasized, public use is encouraged to be accompanied by interpretation for the benefit of the congregation, 1 Corinthians 14, 5. You have 24 hours in your day. Will you give God one minute for this video that could change your life forever? Make sure to share this video with someone because it's gonna absolutely bless them. Right now, if you haven't already, you are about to receive a gift from God. If you wanna speak in tongues right now, Jesus shows us in Mark chapter 16, verse 17, that this is for every single believer. All 
God is looking for in this moment is your humility and faith. If you want to do this right now, I want you to repeat after me. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would baptize me with your fire in this moment in Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to pray for you, and I believe many of you are going to start speaking in your heavenly language. Holy Spirit, I ask that you fill every single person right now and baptize them in your fire in Jesus' name. Now, by faith, begin to speak out as the Holy Spirit is leading you your heavenly language. Come on, let's do it together. Come on, come on, you got it, you got it. In Jesus' name, amen. Some Christian traditions, like many Reformed and Evangelical groups, hold to cessationism, the belief that miraculous gifts such as speaking in tongues ceased with the apostolic age. They argue that these gifts were specific to the foundational period of the Church. Other traditions, particularly within Pentecostal and Charismatic movements, believe in continuationism, the view that all spiritual gifts including speaking in tongues, continue to be available to believers today. The tongues spoken today in Pentecostal churches are those the same that were spoken in Acts. I think it's easy to say that they're not. I mean, it seems obvious that they're not. I don't know anyone that speaks in tongues that speaks the language they, they didn't know and that there's people around that are hearing about the glory of God from it. People have like a prayer language or something. This would be a, a more difficult question if someone said something like that. But if the question is, are the tongues spoken today the same as those spoken at Pentecost? No, they're not. Because the ones spoken at Pentecost, everyone from all over the world was hearing the gospel in the language they understood. So I would believe it 100% if you traveled to Russia and didn't know any Russian and the Lord gave you the ability to speak and understand Russian without having learned it then it's like, yeah, tongues, fully. I think what's happened today or what we see is, you know, when you talk about like the Orthodox prayer bypassing the brain and going to the heart, this kind of tongues thing bypasses the brain, but not. Paul's instructions to the Corinthians highlight the importance of discernment and order in the exercise of spiritual gifts. Speaking in tongues should not cause confusion or division, but should edify the church and glorify God. 1 Corinthians 14, 40. Christians don't hate me. Show your Christ-like love right now because I'm telling you I don't believe that is right. And I think it's so obvious when you read the Bible in Acts 2 where they were all in one place and the Holy Spirit came down like fire and they began to speak in other tongues. But what many don't know is this word tongues in verse 4 literally means language. There were dwelling in Jerusalem men from every nation under heaven. They were amazed and marveled, saying, Are these not Galileans? How is it that we each hear them speak in our own language? Brothers and sisters, they then start naming those nations of languages. Parthians, Medes, Alamites. This makes so much sense because they were just told to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every nation. One problem, they don't speak all the languages of the world, except now they can. The Spirit gave them this power to fulfill an actual need. Oh, but someone's going to say 1 Corinthians chapter 14, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak unto men, but unto God. In the Spirit he speaks mysteries. For the love of all that is true, keep reading, because in verse 5, Paul says he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues unless he interprets so the church may be edified. Verse 19, I would rather speak five words from my understanding than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. So sorry, we're not a 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1 Christian. We read the whole passage and Paul said that it's only useful if it's interpreted. What we see today is that this is like a real pride issue. You're not even filled with the spirit if you can't speak in tongues. <laughs> The gifts that God gives through the Spirit, just like tongues, are to meet specific needs. All of us have different giftings. We're not all prophesying, not all healing, right? And we need to know our place in it. And this can confuse us instead of actually bring us to fulfilling the gifts God has given us in our life. For many believers, the practice of speaking in tongues is seen as a means of spiritual growth and deepening one's prayer life. 
it is often associated with a sense of empowerment and intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Speaking in tongues is a complex and multifaceted practice within Christianity, rooted in biblical accounts and interpreted differently across various traditions. Whether viewed as a miraculous sign of the Holy Spirit, a personal prayer language, or a historical phenomenon, it remains a significant aspect of Christian spiritual life for many believers.